Hi everyone, we're gonna go over the fish for the uh, for the final uh, for fish science. So we're gonna start off here with a walleye. Uh, key characteristics for the walleye: they have two dorsal fins, a spiny spiny rayed fin, and then a soft rayed fin. Um, one uh, another characteristic that not all walleye have is kind of that that whitish marble marble eye. Um, yeah. Uh, sometimes they do have white tips on their fins. Next one's a smallmouth bass. Um, smallmouth bass, the maxilla on this one is not going to go past the eye. Um, usually color is a pretty good way to distinguish between a largemouth and a smallmouth. But uh, this maxilla here is never going to go past the eye like it would on a largemouth. Uh, next one's a black crappie. Um, it's got spiny rays up front and then soft rays on the back of its dorsal fin. It's a laterally compressed fish. Um, colors vary a lot between you know different water bodies and stuff like that. <clears throat> Next one we have is the pumpkin seed. Uh, pumpkin seed is a laterally compressed, deeply bodied fish. Uh, it's got the little orange tip on the back here, and sometimes they'll have some you know blue striations and stuff like that. But usually we'll have an orange belly. Um, same kind of thing um, as the previous listed fish, one dorsal fin, spiny rays up front, soft rays in the back. The next one is our rock bass. Um, all these fish that we've kind of been talking about so far with the exception of walleye are in the centrarchid family, so same kind of thing uh, with the dorsal fin. Uh, laterally compressed fish and color varies uh, a lot or varies a lot between water bodies, but generally they're kind of a brown or olive and key characteristic is usually the red eyeball. Next one is our bluegill. Uh, typically on a bluegill you'd have that black spot on the base of its dorsal fin. This one being a mount it doesn't have it uh, but if you get one in the wild it'll have that. But bluegill, laterally compressed fish, deep bodied um, and kind of that orangish uh, under, underside if you will. Next one, largemouth bass. Uh, this one's a little tough to see because the mouth, its mouth is way open. Uh, but if this guy's mouth was closed, this maxilla here would go way past the eyeball on that. Um, and then, you know, generally they'll have spots through their lateral line all the way back to the caudal peduncle, white belly. Another perkid. Um, so just like the walleye we were talking about before, these guys are gonna have two dorsal fins separated. Uh, spiny rate up front, soft rate in the back, vertical bars for the yellow perch, you know, they spend a lot of time in weed beds and stuff like that, so they use that for camouflage. Generally kind of a yellowish olive uh, undertone to the body, and then orange fins. All right, our next fish is the lake whitefish. Um, these guys, this in the Cisco is going to have an adipose fin up here. A um, little bit more primitive fish compared to some of the centrarchids and perkids we were looking at. Um, these guys are a deeper bodied fish than the Cisco and they have that subterminal mouth. So these guys, you know, spend a lot of their time feeding off the bottom and things like that. The next one is the Cisco. More of a, a torpedo shaped body, if you will. They still have that adipose. Um, a little bit of a deeply forked caudal fin. And these guys are going to have that subterminal mouth. So when you think about the difference between a, a whitefish uh, and a cisco, think more of that pointed snout with the cisco and then more of a rounded head uh, with the whitefish. The next one is our lake trout, uh, one of our native char for New York State. Um, generally they're going to have the vermiculations up top here. Um, and kind of char-like stuff, they're going to have that white leading edge, just like a brook trout would. Adipose fin, deeply forked caudal fin. Uh, these guys, you know, are going to be up and down through the water column, but an apex predator typically in any system that they're in. Uh, so they use that tail to kind of chase down stuff. The next one is our brown trout. Uh, brown trout kind of have a a lobe caudal fin if you will you know a yellowish tinge red spots on that maxilla goes past the eye unlike an Atlantic salmon where it kind of stays in line with that um, they another way you can look at it is the different amount of vomers uh, in the mouth but for the sake of that we're not gonna 
look into its mouth, uh, but really kind of white belly. There's a lot of different color differences and brown trout between water bodies. All right. Next one's our brook trout. Uh, another one of the another one of the native char here in New York. Um, a lot of different color variations, but adipose fin, white leading edges. Um, they'll have the red spots covered by blue halos here. Um, and these guys, you know, get really tiny to, to generally, you know, around this size. This would be a pretty pretty big brook trout. Next one is our Atlantic salmon. Uh, Atlantic salmon, you know, are throughout the state, um, generally in some of our bigger lakes and stuff like that. Adipose fin, kind of lobe caudal fin here. Uh, and the big thing here is that it's not going to extend past the eye. It'll be in line with the eye, but with the brown trout, it went way past it. And that's our, our maxilla or maxillary, whichever you prefer to say. Next one's the white sucker. Uh, one of the catastomids that we're looking at, or I think the only catastomid we're looking at, um, subterminal downturn mouth, really, really common in you know streams, rivers, lakes, and stuff like that throughout New York. These guys are, are pretty easy to tell apart. They've got those really big lobe lips. They're a benthic fish, you know, they feed on the bottom. Next one is our golden shiner, uh, deeply bodied fish. Uh, upturned mouth. Um, these guys have a, a big dip uh, in their lateral line, which you can't see on the mount. But they also have a fleshy keel underneath. Um, you know, if you're if you're handling a live specimen, these guys will vary a lot in color, um, but a fairly intolerant species. So they're or a tolerant species, excuse me. Um, so they're all over the place. They're they're pretty common. Last one is our common carp. Um, really pronounced uh, dorsal fin up top, got a really big spine there, and then it kind of, you know, downgrades to the back towards the caudal peduncle. Um, really large scales on these fish, um, and, and a subterminal mouth. They're a benthic fish also, um, but size really varies. You know, the state records like 50, 60 pounds, something like that. So these fish get pretty big. All right, the next one is our common shiner. Uh, common shiners, real deeply bodied fish. No dip in the lateral line and kind of a big rounded head. Uh, some of these will get tubercles up top when they're getting ready to spawn. Uh, but these kind of stick apart from like a creek chub or something like that with kind of just its deeper body. Next one is the fathead minnow. Um, it's got a real kind of, you know, rounded blunt head. Um, just a kind of an over the top view. And these guys generally have a spot. Uh, that's disconnected from the base of its body on its dorsal fin. Next one is our black nose dace. Uh, real common fish in, in smaller streams in New York, kind of makes its living in riffles. Uh, these guys are going to have a black line that goes all the way through its eye up to the tip of its snout. Our next one is a long nose dace. Um, these guys kind of have a really pronounced snout up here, kind of downturned a little bit, um, and they generally get a little bit bigger uh, than what our black nose days would. Next one is the cut lips minnow. Um, pretty, pretty common in this area of the state. Um, really the big thing to look on these guys is the lips down under here. These guys eat other eyeballs or eat eyeballs from other fish. Um, so these guys, they use those lips to cut it out. Um, so that's how they get their name, the cut lips minnow. Next one is our creek chub. Um, these guys get pretty big, uh, pretty common stream fish around here, uh, rounded head. But the biggest thing with these guys, uh, to tell them apart from other fish, is that spot right here at the base of its dorsal fin. Um, this should point you in creek chub every, every time. Next one is our mud minnow. Um, we have two mud minnows here. This one is a central mud minnow. We also have the eastern one. Um, these guys have their fins put back uh, quite, a bat, uh, quite a bit on their body, their dorsal fins, so they're pretty similar to pike. They're a lion weight predator. Um, the big thing with these on the caudal peduncle is they have that mustache. Um, so that'll point you uh, to a central mud minnow. 
Um, they're kind of a, a torpedo shaped, if you will, um, lobe caudal fin. Last fish we're looking at um, is our slimy sculpin. Um, pretty cool fish, really downturned head, really, really large pectoral fins. Um, these guys live in, they're, they're pretty good indicator of really good water quality. Um, the way that their heads um, and their fins are really allows them to, to stay down on the bottom um, in, in really, really fast currents. Um, so these guys are, are pretty cool. They're, they're a predator in their own right. Yeah.